Sometimes it's magic, and sometimes it is strange. Hi, I'm Andre, and I'm a black nerd with a review for you, but it reviews. I'm actually in San Francisco on a shoot, but I wanted to tear myself away to talk to you about Strange Magic. This is the Lucas animated feature that Disney is putting out. You kind of feel like that when they bought Star Wars and Indiana Jones, Lucas was like, you gotta take that too, pick it up. Like, All right, we'll put it out, Lucas. In January. I got to see the movie on the Disney lot with my good friend Rob of Coin Op TV. He did a review as well, so make sure you check it out on his channel. We were a little unsure in the beginning, but we walked out with smiles on our face, clapping, cheering. We watched. Semi smile. <laughs> This ain't the next Frozen. I'm just saying. This ain't even the next Shrek. Normally I do the good, the bad, and the nerdy, but it's really hard to do it with this movie because there's a lot of things that it does that hits both the good and bad side. I'm not gonna try to spoil it. There may be some hints of spoiler-ish, but I'm gonna keep it as spoiler-free as I can. Plot of Strange Magic. Imagine if George Lucas was trying to make a DreamWorks movie that was trying to act like a Disney movie while watching an episode of Glee. Best synopsis ever. So first off, let's talk about the animation of this thing. Say what you will about George Lucas with his writing, with his storytelling, with his CGI, with his Jar Jar Binks, but I tell you what, that man knows technology. Animation in Strange Magic is really, really good. Just the depth. There's times when you can see things close up and blurred out and things in the background and some of the characters that they make in this look really, really cool. Especially when it's in the dark side. Yes, there's a light side of the forest and a dark side of the forest. Lucas just doesn't stray away. Star Wars, light, dark. Strange Magic, light, dark. Red tail light dark creatures and goblins and monsters and stuff giving some of these characters depth or at least a good running gag throughout the movie I found myself laughing a few times at this movie there's different types of characters in the light side there are the fairies and the elves couldn't help but notice that the elves are kind of like second-class citizens like the fairies were definitely the more dominant race and the voices of the three main elves in this are Elijah Kelly one of the black kids from Hairspray Kevin Michael Richardson very awesome black voice actor and uh, Tony Cox a little black dude that you see in a lot of those date movie, epic movie type of films. You know, anything interesting about all those guys being the elves who were kind of treated like lower class to the fairies? I'm just, I'm just, I'm just putting it out there. I'm just, I'm just saying. I also have to mention the prince in this movie because he has a very interesting voice. Mixed between a half Elvis, half Nicolas Cage, half Nicolas Cage trying to sound like Elvis. Doesn't fit his character model at all. And it's one of those weird things that's so off and so weird and stupid that it works. Okay, now here's where it gets interesting. <laughs> there is music in this movie, but it's not like, let it go. No, 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 no. It's pop songs. Fairy creatures, goblins, elves singing pop songs. But I can't help falling in love with you. Big Glee number. What am I watching right now? This is like Rock of Ages animated. <laughs> Moulin Rouge, very much like Moulin Rouge animated. And the thing is, you can accept that, except they really want to drive the point that they're doing that at the beginning of the movie, and it will frustrate you. These characters sing like every minute for the first 15 to 20 some minutes of this movie. I didn't know that this was going to happen. I'm telling you this is a warning. After about 10 minutes of this, I was like, oh my God, what have we got ourselves into? It was scaring me just every single time someone sang. I was just like, this is bad. It reminded me of, of the Chipmunks movies when they just have them singing every single pop song of the time just because they can. Yes, we want to see the Chipmunks sing with my hair. It isn't until Alan Cumming comes in as the Bog King that it makes sense. Okay. Now I get it. And from that point forward, it actually kind of works out. It's not as many songs. They happen at appropriate points in the movie. So if it wasn't just for that first part of it kind of draining you out because they were just trying to hammer the point home of, hey, look at this, we're singing songs, you know. Evan Rachel Wood, who plays Marianne. Have you seen the trailers of the commercials? They're doing the whole like, oh, she's a fire chick. She's not like your average princess. The thing about the movie, they don't tell you, she actually doesn't start out that way. She actually does start out like your typical fairy princess. Something happens in the movie that causes her to change. And I have to say, that's something I give kudos to this movie. What they do with her character, both in how she changes and also her sort of romance story, I liked, because it was a little bit different. I was like, okay, I can get behind this. However, there's another romance in this movie and it ticked me off. 
I just was mad because I was like, I have been in that situation in real life and that don't go down like that in real life. Don't lie to me, Strange Magic. You're gonna know who I'm talking about if you see the movie and when I explain it, but I'm just saying if you ever been that dude or girl who was like friends with somebody, but you really liked them, but they don't ever seem to notice that, this movie may give you a lie of how that's all gonna turn out at the end. This movie is all about love. It's all about love. Bottom line, uh, this movie is weird because there's a lot of things in it that I was like, okay, I could see this working, but then it just takes those big missteps. I know a lot of critics are gonna tear this thing apart because it has George Lucas's name on it and it's fun to bash George Lucas post prequels. This is nowhere near your next Disney slash Pixar or even DreamWorks great fair. It's it's subpar. But it's not as terrible as some people are gonna say. This is something that you're gonna rent when it comes out. Watch on Netflix, keeps the kids quiet, you won't be completely brain dead from it, and just leave it at that. And be nice to elves, okay? They're people too. Compared to the fairies, they literally are three-fifths of a person because they're shorter, but they're still individuals. <laughs> So I want to hear from you. Are you planning on seeing Strange Magic? And if you do see it, let me know what you think of it. And if you could have any cartoon character sing any song, what cartoon character would it be and what pop song would you want them to sing? Thumbs up this video. And if you're new here, tickle that subscribe button. I love you like a play cousin. I'm Ali 5000. Chain chomp. Yomp.